Hi folks, welcome back. This video is about the power and limitations of Bool. So what I want you to do is pause your videos now and read through all of these uh, bullet, bullet pointed sentences. See which of them uh, you think Bool actually can do and which of them Bool can't do. All right, pause your videos now. I want you to work through this. Okay, that was your last chance to pause your videos. Um, there's many things on this list that Bool is capable of, but there's also a bunch of them that Bool can't do. And understanding exactly what are the uh, powers and the limitations of Bool is something that's really critical to understanding this logical system. Let me say, in case some of these definitions are not clear to you, um, let's start with the concept of equivalence. Equivalence is one of the key concepts of the course. It just means two sentences have the same truth value. Whenever one is true, the other is true, and vice versa. So they co-vary in truth value. And in this video, I'm going to focus on the ones that have to do with equivalence here. And in subsequent videos, we'll talk about some of the other groups, like necessarily true sentences or valid sentences. So what I've done for you is I've given you the answer. The stuff in black, this is what Bool is actually capable of. I mean, I guess you could write poetry in Bool. I'll leave that up to you uh, and your own aesthetic sensibilities. But Bool can prove some sentences are necessarily true. It can prove some are necessarily false, but that doesn't mean for any necessarily true or false sentence, Bool can prove that it's necessarily true or false. It has some limitations. Um, same with equivalence. Some equivalences it can prove. Some sentences it can prove definitively are not equivalent, but that doesn't mean no matter what two sentences you give it, it can always prove whether they're equivalent. Those limitations are the key thing. And here's the final lesson um, that we're gonna talk about. The limitations have to do with truth functionality. The only logical tool in Bool is truth tables, is their truth functional connectives. Bool is a truth functional system. And so if the logic has to do with truth functionality, it can do it. But not all of logic is truth functional. Um, and that's what we're gonna, that's why the course doesn't end after Bool. We're gonna learn some more logical systems uh, after this after Bool as well. All right, let's start with showing what Bool can do. So let's prove some sentences are equivalent. Uh, like here, I give you two sentences. When we do two sentences on the same truth table, we just call this a joint truth table. What I want you to do is compute their truth functions. So computing truth functions is a skill you need to master, and that's then how you do something with Bool, how you prove that sentences are equivalent or not. So how do we do this? First, you just compute from the inside out. So I write the truth function for conjunction there. That's just based on these values over here. Uh, I also need to compute the narrow scope connective of this sentence, so that's why I did these negations first. This just inverts the value of P and inverts the value of Q. Once you have those, then you can compute the main connective of each sentence. So here it's the disjunction is the main connective, here it's the negation is the main connective. And look, these two truth functions are identical. So even though these are different sentences, the sentences are equivalent with each other. They have the same truth function and therefore they're equivalent. Now, these are truth functional equivalent. It's just the truth functional connectives alone that guarantee that these are equivalent. It doesn't matter what P and Q mean. Anything else is irrelevant. This structure of these Boolean connectives, that structural fact about these sentences guarantees they're equivalent no matter what. And there's, a fa there's names for some of these famous equivalences that Boole can substantiate. So De Morgan's laws are two of them and double negation are a couple of them that you've seen before. So, uh, what this means is uh, Bool can prove sentences are equi logically equivalent if they are truth functionally equivalent. If it's the truth functional connectives that guarantee that the sentences are equivalent, then Bool is your, Bool can do the job for you. It's great. Um, okay, let's pause for a minute and review some concepts. You learned before what semantic, syntactic, and pragmatic are. Um, I want you to test yourself. Which of these categories would you put the notion of logical equivalence in? So pause your videos now while you think about it. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. The answer is semantic, because equivalence is defined in the, with the concept of truth. It says these two sentences co-vary in truth value, and you can't talk about truth, uh, you can't talk about equivalence unless you can talk about truth, and you can't talk about truth unless you can talk about meaning, and semantics is the meanings of those connectives. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've used, we've shown that Boole can prove some sentences are equivalent, um, and you do that with a joint truth table. Now, I mentioned previously that you can also prove some sentences are not equivalent. And I, I just talked about this really sketchily, but I want to walk through the example to show exactly how this goes. It's really important to understand that these two sentences are not equivalent. And this shows that grouping matters when we have a mixture of Boolean connectives, conjunction and disjunction. Now, how do we use Bool to, to prove this? 
we do the exact same thing. We construct a joint truth table, and now we just have to grind out these truth functions. First, we compute the inner values. So here's the computation of conjunction of P and Q. Here's the computation of Q or R. Those are the innermost values. Then I use those and these other values to compute the main connectives. So here's the main connective. Here's the truth function of the first sentence. Here's the truth function of the second sentence. And the thing to notice is they don't always covary in truth value. On rows five and seven, they have different truth values. So either one of those rows is sufficient to prove that they're not equivalent. A single failure to be identical uh, creates a failure of equivalence. So that's how we use Boole to prove some sentences are not equivalent. Again, you just construct the joint truth table. Now the most subtle thing, and this is the last topic for this video, how do we, how do we show this red thing? For any equivalent sentences, can we prove that they're equivalent in Boole? And the answer is no. How do we show Boole has this limitation? Now, I can't show it by giving you an example of double negation, because that happens to be a, an equivalence that depends just on the Boolean connectives, and Boole can do that. So that can't be my counterexample. What I need is to find some aspect of logic that Boole doesn't capture. Here's, here's the paradigm. Uh, I, the identity relation. This is not a Boolean connective. It's not a true functional connective. When I say P equals Simone, or P is Simone, what I'm saying is, it's like saying one plus one equals two. I mean, these are two ways of referring to the same person. She's got two names, Pia and Simone. So if P and Simone, this is a, a sentence that's true. Let's just imagine this is true, Pia and, is Simone. Well, identity is symmetric. That means if Pia is Simone, Simone is Pia. You can't make one of these true without the other one being true. This is just how the identity predicate works. You know, one plus one equals two, two equals one plus one. You can just flip things around on an identity. So these are equivalent, but what guarantees that they're equivalent is the fact about the identity relation. It's a logical fact about this thing, and that is not one of the Boolean connectives. Remember what an atomic sentence is. An atomic sentence is just uh, a fundamental unit of language that does not have another sentence as a constituent. So th there's no sentential parts of this. This is an atomic sentence. Anything with the identity relation is an atomic sentence. Uh, uh, anything with just two names and the identity predicate. So, so these are, if I formalize these in Boole, I would like give one letter A and the other with the letter B. Uh, they would just, or I'd call one P and one Q. They would just get some arbitrary names. Each one would get its own sentence letter because these are not the same sentence. It, you know, the order of, of the names is different in them. They're not the same sentence. So they would have to get their own sentence letters. And the trouble is any two atomic sentences are not equivalent in Boole because both of them could be true and could be false. But when you, when you do a truth table for them, remember you have to construct a joint truth table. What happens is they each get a reference column. So we get these combinations where one could be true and the other could be false. But this is deeply deceiving because even, even though on the truth table, it looks like one A could be true while B is false on row two here, that doesn't mean that they really, um, one could be true and the other false. It just means that the truth table can't see it because the facts, the logical facts that make this necessarily, these two sentences equivalent um, are sort of, are, are of a different granularity. They're more specific, they're more fine grained than the truth table can see. Uh, to put it another way, the truth functional connectives don't guarantee these are true. This is not about truth functions, but truth tables just capture the truth functional facts about logic, and not all logic is truth functional. So really, as far as the truth table knows, uh, these things could be identical. Uh, these things could not vary covariant truth value. Their truth values could come apart. I'm just doing this live here. But this row is actually impossible, uh, and this row is impossible. So, but the truth table doesn't know that these rows are impossible. So these sentences in English are equivalent, but they're not equivalent in their truth functional structure, or as far as Boole can tell, they're not equivalent. So this is a limitation of Boole. Here, here's the final word, because what we're talking about are the ways in which there can be two sentences that are equivalent, but Boole can't prove that they are. And the answer is, if that equivalence does not depend on truth functional logic. If it depends on some other aspect of logic, like the logic of the identity relation, the identity predicate, then Boole is not going to be able to capture it. What are the things that Boole can capture? What are the equivalences that Boole can prove are always equivalent? Well, those are the ones, for example, like De Morgan's laws and double negation, where the equivalence does just depend upon the truth functional connectives. If, if that's the nature of the logic at issue, Boole can do it. Um, but that doesn't mean Boole can do anything whatsoever.
Okay, thanks.